We are sandwiched between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas in Arlington at the luxurious AT&T Stadium. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. And the opening kickoff will not be returned as that will be a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. It'll be a loss of ten. And it'll bring up second. How about the defense there and try to set the tone on the very first play of the game? Yeah, there's a little bit of a glow here tonight because they brought the heat right out of the gate. What a good job establishing the tone for this one. After the sack on first down, Roethlisberger. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. It's picked up by the Cowboys. Not only a fumble loss there, but a fumble lost on your first drive in your own territory. Now you're dealing with a lot of stuff here because you feel bad going off the field because you gave up the football. How does your own defense feel now having to go out there and stop them when the momentum has clearly shifted in their favor? And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Working with a second and three. Now it's Romo off the bootleg. He'll buy some, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. T.J. Watt, the all-pro, in there to take him down. And nowhere to hide on that play. No, there was not, because every exit door, that was surrounded. And I think that was supposed to be a bootleg. But he had no chance to get outside the pocket and try and make a play. Throwing on third down, Romo. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. On is the punter, Brian Anger, to kick this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Roethlisberger. Pressure comes and down he goes. The tank, Demarcus Lawrence with a sack. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. Going long here for Wallace. And got his man complete. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. But I think it's about time I took my eyes off of the secondary or the guys with the football. How about the offensive line on that snap? They took care of business. Absolutely. And when he can stay in the pocket like that, you're going to get big plays like we just saw. They'll try the right side with Bell. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. 
Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll go again with Bell. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, it's a nice running right there. That's what got them the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. Now it's Roethlisberger. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Demarcus Lawrence, his second sack of the night. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Yeah, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game. I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what. When he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And this brings up a third and goal. Now Roethlisberger. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So obviously, they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out, but they'll do so fatigued. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right. Oh, wide open, complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drives. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover or put their defense in a bad spot, but not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and ten. Here's Romo. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Here's Romo. 
He finds Austin complete. And he will have a Cowboys first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Romo here on first down. Austin is there and brings in another one. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And now we're going to get a stoppage. A member of the Cowboys shaken up. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look. And we will take a short break. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Romo. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. A shotgun handoff. This is Murray now. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Robo. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. But well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And this one is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, we virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, the football changing hands here, and as this offense takes a field, Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive last time out. They found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing again on second down. Roethlisberger. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up a third down. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? 
because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. Here's Presley Harvin now. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Good starting position for the Cowboys here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. They start on the ground with Elliott. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Working with second and five now. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A little eager there coming in from his outside linebacker position. You think the hard count got him there? Yes. Maybe that extra hut, you know, <laughs> that, that extra emphasis on it. Got him to jump, and they picked up five yards. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. After the penalty, it's Elliott. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Now Romo. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll try and run for it with Elliott, and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Romo. Over the middle, he hits Austin. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. And what we just saw their partner was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Third and two, it's Romo. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Romo. Throw left side complete. That's Murray. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. Now Romo. Over the middle, it's complete. And yeah, the Cowboys are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. 
I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Romo got his tight end. That's complete. It's Ferguson. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flip. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. A five-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys have moved out in front. Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down in bounds, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is now 10-7. The kick team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. It is fielded right at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. On second down, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and inches situation. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are out in the field and only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. The Steelers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Miller on the catch over the middle. And he will have a Steelers first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. He's going deep for Brown. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Thus far, they have been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now Roethlisberger. This will be caught by Brown. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 
Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And that's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 38. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he is going to lose yardage here. And tip your cap to Demarcus Lawrence. Nice play defensively. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. He'll check it down to Bell. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. And we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. On third down, Roethlisberger. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Second and a yard, Roethlisberger. Open man, completes it to Smith-Schuster. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab, and the Steelers have retaken the lead. That's an old-fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play, and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead is now 14 to 10. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one fielded at the five. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The time to get another look at this Cowboys offense. 
And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. Yeah, especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. Romo's throw taken in by Cooper here. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw, Romo. On the right side, this is Austin with a catch. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Second down, here's Romo. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing again is Romo. And this one is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Romo now to throw. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first down, Romo. Completes it to Austin. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. One more drive here for the Steeler offense in this first half. 
And they'll have time for one play. That's it. Three seconds to go before intermission. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. From the six. And he returns this to the 22. The Cowboy offense set to go to begin this third quarter. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far in the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it, and the running game is starting to pay off. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Romo's throw brought in by Austin. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Up the middle. Here's Hallian. Shifts by him. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Oh, look at the juke. And room there to work it inside the 25. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. From the shotgun, a give to Elliott. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Romo here on first down. And this is caught by Winton, the tight end. And they'll get this down to the 10. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. Well, that's always a good place to throw it, just because he's one of the biggest targets, not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. Murray. He is going backwards as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. 
Now Romo on third and goal. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. And a lot of being a defender is being able to learn what you can and can't get away with when in man coverage. In this case, he got away with it and helped pop that ball free. So now on fourth down, Mike McCarthy will turn to his field goal unit. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Steeler D will celebrate the goal line stand. Oh, that was an intriguing call. You got a chip shot field goal. Tight game. Why not just take the three? I know that not all the old rules apply in today's NFL. And in fact, I'd love to have an analytics coach here with us right now to say why that was probably a good play. I don't know if even the analytics coach would have said that. That seemed like a bad play. Take the points there and move on. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 more yards there and another first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Yeah, he did not want to go down there as he carries tacklers for a solid gain of nine. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Roethlisberger's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. This will be caught once again by Brown. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the night as his guys are able to extend their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead is up to eight. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. Yeah. 
They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. From the gun, here's Romo. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. The frustration is definitely setting in because they've thrown it to him over and over, unable to come up with a catch thus far. I think he knew he would have his challenges against the secondary. I don't think he saw a goose egg at this point in the game. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Romo. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Now Brown. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Finding Miller once more complete. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. And that will be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty six yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return and it will be first and ten as they take over and out now come the Cowboys. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 27 yards there, a first down. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, 
I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's Romo. Going right side, he has Winton. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. The offense on third down tonight, three for seven so far in this game. They're looking at third and a few inches. Inside give to Elliott. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now Romo. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. Well, I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. They run from the shotgun with Murray. And he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers 28. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Now a play fake, and it's Romo. Steps away to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. On to punt now, Anger, as he boots this one away. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle, complete. That's Bell. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. Off the play fake. Here's Roethlisberger. Right back to Bell, and it's caught once again. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him, and he makes another nice play. Back-to-back -back catches. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Bell. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Up the middle, here's Bell. And he'll get it down here to the 43. 
67 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell him to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A big play there. 43 yards. And the Steelers have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. The lane opens here. He's past the 30, the 40, 20, 10, 5, and they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown, Cowboys. That was a special return, and it happened because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times when they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? You're exactly right. What's the old adage? Sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules. And if you do, you're taking out some responsibility. But he was happy to do so there. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped it to 23. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They go play action now. Roethlisberger going long here for Wallace. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. 
A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 52 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Now an inside give to Bell. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. 76 yards rushing for him now to this point. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got to lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? On third and one, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. Touchdown! Juju Smith-Schuster with his second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Brandon, remind me again, this is a rookie quarterback we're seeing? A rookie indeed. I mean, because my eyes are telling me something I'm having trouble believing. Five touchdown passes. He's thrown five in this game. Are you kidding me? Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead is up to 15 now. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. Now Tony Romo on first down. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Brandon, how about that reaction there from a defensive end? Able to recognize the screen pass trying to happen. Broke off his pass rush. And they get back to tackle the running back. That's a very athletic and intelligent play. Reminds me of you working out and seeing that the treadmill's open and getting there before anyone else. See, I know you're just patronizing me right now. Everybody knows <laughs> at home that that is nothing but a shot at me, and I'll take it, absorb it, and we'll move on. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. On first down, Romo. This little short throw to Witten. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. The Cowboys looking to get going again in a hurry. Out of the gun, Romo. To the right side, he's got Cooper. It's complete. 
And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 38-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Romo now to throw. A dump off to Elliott. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. Romo throwing again. Over the middle, he hits Austin. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now it's Romo. He finds his man complete. It's Murray. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Four yards remain for second down. Back to throw, Romo. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line, unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Romo. Got a man here. It's Brian. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Desperation time for Romo on fourth down. And this is caught, so it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. yeah, you know. It doesn't that, feel right. Exactly. So looking at this situation, you should have time for the onside kick and then at least one play. And it's the Steelers that come up with it. And that should just about do it. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. 
And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Yeah, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. And the defense will spread the field a dime package here on third and 12. Roethlisberger dropping to a knee, and that ought to do it. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory.